Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. The UAW ramps up the pressure. But we got to do what we got to do. The goal, stopping the flow of parts across the country. No pay! No parts! No pay! No parts! General Motors and Stellantis in the crosshairs. Stellantis and GM in particular are going to need some serious pushing. But Ford, at least for now, gets a reprieve. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. The UAW so-called stand-up strike now just over a week old. And today's expansion includes walkouts at 38 General Motors and Stellantis parts distribution centers in 21 states, including Florida, Georgia, California, and New York. 13 of them are here in Michigan. Today's strike action, sending around 5,600 more workers to the picket lines, but none of them at Ford facilities, as the union says there's been progress in the those particular talks. So tonight, both General Motors and Stellantis responding, saying the offers they've given the UAW are historic and mean thousands more dollars in the pockets of workers. Our Mar McDonald is live at General Motors headquarters tonight. Mar GM calls what the UAW did today unnecessary. That's right, Kimberly, and it's taking it a step farther as well. GM asking tonight, is what's going on with these contract negotiations really about the offers on the table, or is it about the personal ideologies and agendas of the UAW leadership? Take a look. Tonight, GM saying in part it questions whether, quote, the UAW leadership is manipulating the bargaining process for their own personal agenda. GM has spent the week trying to appeal directly to workers, showing them what that 20% wage increase, faster path to maximum wage, and other goodies like five weeks of vacation would do for them. Very similar over at Stellantis, where it, quote, strongly rejects the claims made today by UAW President Sean Fain. In fact, we presented a very competitive offer and yet never received a response. Our stand-up strike strategy is designed to do one thing, win record contracts after years of record profits. Ford saw no further targeted strikes today because the UAW is pleased with progress there. Today's move is meant to make you, the consumer, feel the parts pinch. Will they? Both GM and Stellantis say the companies have contingency plans in place to protect their customers, but the UAW has now expanded its strike targets well beyond the Midwest. Back here live. So here's what we're looking forward to next week. President Biden is coming to talk to the auto workers on Tuesday. Former President Trump is coming to talk to the auto workers on Wednesday. But the big question remains, are we going to see a replay of what we saw this week, which is the UAW threatening more targeted strikes by a Friday deadline if they don't see what they refer to as serious progress. We're live downtown tonight outside General Motors World Headquarters. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, okay, Mara, thank you. And as Mara said, amid today's expanded strike action, the White House announcing President Biden will join workers on the picket lines next Tuesday. One of the more active spots for picketing today, Stellantis facility in Centerline, where Jacqueline Francis says a look at how the rank and file are reacting to the strike expansion. Things have died down quite a bit. Well, we got some honking there, but from when Sean Fain was here earlier today on the picket lines, now these strikers are settling in and backing Fain's message all the way. In center line, it's night one on the picket line. I had a feeling that we were going to be going out, so I wasn't surprised. Strikers at this Stellantis plant say they'd rather be working, but they're not going to settle. It is terrible. It is terrible. We don't want, you know, we don't want to be on strike. But the vibe is we're willing to fight for what we're worth. This is one of 13 GM and Stellantis facilities in Michigan called on to strike. All of them dealing with parts and distribution. UAW President Sean Fain outside the Centerline plant Friday putting the blame on the automakers. The companies made this decision. I'll just go back to that. This is this is on them. They own it. They chose not to address our members' concerns. They chose not to address these issues. And as long as they keep that attitude, we will keep cranking up the pressure. Strikers backing Fain's message. They had eight weeks to, to, to get this deal done. They waited till the last week to, to even try to get a deal done and then say that we're not cooperating. Where were you for seven weeks? The group behind me will soon be wrapping up their first strike shift with who knows how many days ahead. 
Reporting live in Centerline, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Yeah, boy, all right, Jacqueline. Our coverage continues over on ClickOnDetroit.com. You can find a full recap of everything that has happened on this very eventful day and what could happen next. The story has a link right there on our homepage. All right, let's uh, see what's happening with our forecast on this last day of last summer. Full day, yeah. Last full day. That. But the weather's going to stick around for it. <laughs> it is. It's going to feel like summer, but we're less than four hours away from saying goodbye to summer and hello to fall. It happens at exactly 250. And if you're wondering why 250, well, the Earth is tilted on an axis, so 23.5 degrees. The noon sun is directly over the equator we will have exactly 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. That's the fall equinox. So that happens at 2.50 and it happens twice a year where we get that noon sun right over the equator. It happens for spring and it happens for fall. And it's a September 23rd this year. It goes anywhere from the 21st to about the 23rd, but again, tilted on its axis. And that's why we have the season. So it's right over the equator. So it is fall in the northern hemisphere and it is spring in the summer. It feels like it's summer pretty much everywhere across the Midwest. Uh, it's very, very mild. 63 in Mount Clemens right now, 64 in Pontiac. If you're headed to the Michigan game tomorrow, what a great day for football. Or if you're headed to Michigan State, also a beautiful day as well. We'll talk more about the tropics and how that's influencing our weather here coming up. Okay, Kim, updating a story we first brought you Wednesday. Two men are facing charges in connection with a fatal shooting of a business owner in Dearborn. 27-year-old Lindsay Thurman of Detroit and 29-year-old Quentin Ghoston of Melvindale are facing charges of felony murder and first-degree murder in the death of Hassan Salome. Salome was shot and killed Tuesday night as he and his fiancée were leaving the Sushi Co. restaurant in Dearborn. Police say when he got to his SUV, the suspect pulled up, shot him in the front of his right in front of his fiance. Police tracked the suspects to a tire shop in Detroit, arrested them. The takedown here captured on security camera video and tonight both men are held without bond. U.S. Senator, <coughs> excuse me, Bob Menendez tonight rejecting calls to resign over bribery charges. Justice Department says the New Jersey Democrat used his influence as a senator to enrich several businessmen as well as the Egyptian government. The indictment alleging Menendez and his wife Nadine got hundreds of thousands of dollars in kickbacks. Today, several Democrats in New Jersey and on Capitol Hill have called for Menendez to step down. Tonight, Menendez responds saying, quote, I am not going anywhere. He also suggested people are rushing to judge him because of his Latino heritage. Menendez has been a U.S. senator since 2006. A building in Eastern Market that appeared destined for demolition will apparently remain standing. The 130-year-old Del Bean building across from Shed 2 partially collapsed six days ago. The city of Detroit deemed it unsafe to enter for any reason and ordered an emergency demolition. Those plans were put on hold Thursday when the owner filed an appeal. Well, now after hearing from engineers, the city has agreed the building is indeed safe to enter for the purposes of repairing it. Building Safety Director David Bell says the city is eager to work with the owner to, quote, get this building back online as quickly as possible. 